Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today's webinar. My name is Sunny Makija and I'm a senior insight sales specialist at Crave Infotech. Today we are presenting uh, on moving from reactive maintenance to predictive maintenance with SAP's intelligent asset management, which will be presented by Simon Lee from SAP and Shrika Nistane from Crave Infotech. Uh, Simon is a solution owner uh, for SAP Predictive Asset Insight. Simon has been working on the predictive maintenance topic at SAP for the past eight years. Uh, first as product manager and now as a solution manager. Uh, Simon has over 25 years of experience in the enterprise application space. And we have from Crave Infotech is Shrikan Nistane. He is a digital transformation enthusiast experienced in uh, SAP Digital Core, Enterprise Asset Management, Enterprise Mobility and Cloud Platform. He has 27 plus years of industry experience helping organization in wide range experience with technology and technological changes for multiple line of business. Uh, now without any further ado, I would hand over to Shrikan to start the presentation. Over to you, Shrikan. Uh, Shrikan, you're, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, uh, Simon. Pleasure uh, presenting with you together. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining the webinar. Uh, we're going to spend uh, total 40 minutes, probably, uh, talking about reactive to predictive journey and I'm going to talk uh, initially about uh, the overall end-to-end um, -end <clears throat> overview about the EAM, uh, Intelligent Asset Management, and then Simon will deep dive into, especially into the predictive maintenance. So this screen actually gives you an idea about what's the Intelligent Asset Management maturity Sorry about that. My mouse is very sensitive. So this talks about uh, how the intelligent asset management maturity model looks like. And this also helps to determine where each organization is. So if you see, uh, it starts from reactive. Then the next step is the predictive. Now after that is condition-based maintenance. I'm sorry. Reactive, preventive, condition-based maintenance, and finally predictive. <coughs> Now, Crave Infotech has developed a model. We have a list of questions which allows us uh, to help you to identify where you are on this journey. Of course, everybody wants to be as close as to the predictive, uh, and the journey starts from reactive phase. So the next slide talks about what are the different tool sets available which will allow us to go to that level. So first, we start with always with the system of record, right? And today's focus is on EAM, so it's about plant maintenance, service management, so we have equipment master, bill of materials, spares, order processing, calibration, breakdown, corrective facility. You might have a little bit more, uh, but all of that, we need an ERP. That's where SAP comes into picture, and I'm assuming most of you or all of you who is attending using SAP. If you don't, SAP is the ERP for uh, managing the data. <clears throat> then comes, once you have the ERP, you need to have effective way of collecting the data. So digitizing the data collection. And for that, people use the field mobility. Um, if you don't have, if you have Wi-Fi or connectivity issues, you need, you look for them offline. Uh, Real-time connectivity, real-time updates, even in some cases, you will need label printing or printing anything into the shop floor. Or uh, if you are into the field service, then you need to print invoices or the uh, aftermath paperwork for the customer uh, or your end users into the field. So that includes the workforce management. So it has asset manager is one of SAP solution. Uh, you might have, and we'll talk about some of our IP, uh, which is helps to complement SAP's activities of calibration facilities and the rounds manager. Another way is IoT. Um, so you can have, now IoT is being used very generically, but uh, you can collect the data from your existing SCADA system, PLCs, or if you have now smart uh, measurement devices, then you can get the data from there and aggregate it into the system. So IoT is another way to collect the data. Third is uh, SAP also has a network, but you can have 
collaboration for better information and SAP has a tool called AIN, Asset Intelligence Network. Next is, after that, once, so we have system of record, we have data acquisition, now we want to analyze the data. And for that, uh, you would like to use different tools, RCM, reliability center and maintenance, failure mode and effective analysis, risk based inspections, root cause analysis. All of these are different techniques used to analyze the data and uh, perform the risk and strategy assessment. And SAP has a tool called ASPM, uh, Asset Strategy and Performance Management. <clears throat> then next comes, now we move, um, get that data. So we have, we have system of record, we have acquired the data, we have analyzed the risk. Now we need to do the predictability based upon all that. That's where the predictive analytics comes into picture. And I'm gonna leave that for Simon to deep dive as much as he can. Uh, and finally, these all tools provides us what corrective actions we need to take. Uh, that can be incorrect data entry, measurement out of the range, all of that stuff. Uh, these tools also provide recommendations and corrective actions and they end up going back to the mobile. So there is a back loop into the workforce management and mobility area. So that's how um, we have this complete end-to-end -end loop with different solutions for you to go from a reactive or a paper-based system to completely predictive. So this is uh, the standard SAP uh, intelligent asset management architecture. And you can see here we have Asset Central Foundation, uh, ASPM, that's what I was talking about, Asset Strategy and Performance Management, AIN, Asset Intelligence Network, and PIA, that's Predictive Asset Insight, which uh, Simon is going to talk more. And that all integrates with everything. So IoT, um, OEM integrations, integrating with the SAP stack. So you can use this with ECC or S4 or even with non-SAP system. And then you have Asset Manager here for offline, online, native app, uh, app application. So that's a high level architecture. In addition to this, next slide will tell you how we add value, right? So Crave Infotech as a partner, we have also some of the prepackaged apps which are into the white space for SAP. So flexible scheduling, flexible dispatch, uh, then tracking and map-based dispatch. So you want to track your location of the people if they are in the field, or you want to track the location of the assets, we can help you with that. Uh, planning workbench, we have an application uh, validated by SAP. Uh, which helps your planners to plan work effectively. And then also approval. So approval of the work order, approval of the notification based upon several parameters. And finally, we have our own um, Fiori and cloud platform based mobile applications into the white space area in addition to the asset manager, wherever asset manager cannot do it. We have very specialized application developed for the regulated industry like life sciences and uh, um, and chemical where uh, you need to satisfy the 21 CFR part 11 and 211 requirements uh, for the regulatory compliance and we help there. So this is the complete stack. Uh, we also have work clearance management extension um, for the asset manager which helps you to to do the lockout tag out and satisfy the permits on the uh, mobile application. So in summary, uh, what all we as a partner can offer? So we do plant maintenance, customer service, service management module implementation, work management for ISU CCS, if you are a utility organization or energy organization, work SAP work manager, asset manager, uh, and then these are the components related to intelligent asset management. And then there are some pre-package. But in addition to that, most important, we also bring in the barcode, RFID, and mobile computing because we are also Zebra's partner. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more. So when we come in, we bring in everything, hardware, software, and the integration piece, and also barcode and RFID enablement. This is the quick uh, screenshot of our connected assets and IoT application, which is mainly started with the vehicle tracking, but it also does the route optimization, vehicle tracking, and also delivery confirmation. We also have some, uh, we call Amplify packages. So we work with SAP closely, and in order to help you to um, 
<clears throat> to get this implemented quickly, we have created Amplify package, which comes with a very defined scope. For example, asset manager implementation, we have a package, one legal entity, one plant, one planner group, and this is a scope, notification processing, order processing, inspection rounds, geospatial information, equipment view S3, and we can help you to implement that in around 40 to, between 45 and 60K. Uh, that, of course, doesn't include the uh, asset manager licenses, but this includes everything, and we can do that within uh, three months time frame. Similarly, we have uh, the uh, implementation Amplify package for the IAM Suite 2, and you can look at that once you get the um, deck. Finally, uh, what we are passionate about. So we as a Crave InfoTech, we bring in SAP Intelligent Enterprise, which is ECC or S4, SAP Cloud Platform, prepackaged solution, standard SAP solution, Zebra Mobile Computing, and Geo Enablement together for warehouse management, enterprise asset management, field service and supply chain, um, so if you have any interest in other areas like warehouse and field supply chain, we'll be happy to talk to you. A uh, little bit about us. We are a 13-year-old company. We have three SAP partnerships, sell, build, and service. Uh, we are Zebra's premier ISV and reseller, here technology ISV and reseller, and global presence. This is the list of our few selected customers, utility, uh, water, oil and gas, uh, electric, gas utility, then um, generation, power generation, um, chemical, retail, companies like large organizations like Siemens, uh, manufacturing, life sciences, healthcare. So we have a mix of uh, different customer base uh, in this space. Okay. With that, I will uh, hand it over to Simon. Let me get Simon's presentation up. Yeah. So that Simon can, uh, I think, I, 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 Sunny, uh, handing over to you, please. Yeah. Thank you, Shrikant, for your thoughts. And uh, uh, I will be handing over to Simon in just a couple minutes. And before that, I have actually asked my attendees, actually, I have just launched a poll questions right away. So could you guys please uh, share a couple minutes and go through the poll questions and uh, we can just uh, move forward in, after that. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah. Let's take a few seconds to yes. complete the poll and then we can get Simon. Uh, We can let Simon go right now. Simon, you can just take over from here and let the attendees just go through with the poll questions. Not a problem in that. All right. Hey, thank you, Sonny. And thank you, Shrikan. Thank you for having me today. And thanks to everyone for taking the time. Uh, so my name is Simon Lee. Uh, I think I have about 20 minutes and uh, uh, to share with you our point of view from SAP. The next slide, please. So uh, also, as Srikam has mentioned, uh, from SAP, we've also seen customers across industries uh, really are becoming more and more interested in helping in becoming more data driven, using all the technologies that are available to gain more insights and uh, uh, to really introduce and increase uh, predicted maintenance into their maintenance mix. Okay, and uh, the idea here is that all these technologies are available and a lot of our customers are either already have the data sitting somewhere or are collecting the data as, as Srikan said from your PLCs, from your SCADA, from your IoT. Uh, but now the challenge is, you know, can we get more insights and uh, uh, turn these insights into action? So the next slide, please. So here, here's our point of view, right? So there are multiple approaches to predict the maintenance, right? So this is the so-called PF curve. So you're looking at uh, functional failure uh, for an equipment over time. And of course, uh, before that, 
um, with different techniques, you can get more advanced warnings or, or signals to potential failures. And the idea here is that by leveraging the latest technologies uh, to complement the existing practices, um, you know, in addition to your, your, you know, your inspections from your technicians, you know, hearing the noise, look, you know, uh, sensing the temperature or, or the vibration, doing vibration analysis, sending it to your vendor for a monthly report. Now we have the IoT technologies. We have big data uh, capabilities for machine learnings and simulations. And we have all this massive computing power in the cloud. Okay, now we can actually ingest all that data and apply machine learning, be able to do engineering simulations, which were previously only using R&D, using these techniques in SM management to give you more time to give you better or more advanced uh, warnings to potential failures, giving you more flexibility to dynamically plan your maintenance events, right? So convert unplanned downtime to planned downtime. So you don't have to over maintain your equipment and reduce maintenance costs. That's, um, and that's really why SAP, um, you know, working with partners such as Crave Infotech, right? Being able to, to uh, bring these solutions to our customers. The next slide, please. As Srikant has mentioned, um, our uh, specific product uh, that's that's uh, behind these capabilities uh, is SAP Predictive Asset Insights, okay? And uh, this is our product that brings together the latest in machine learning AI, uh, the ability to do engineering simulations using digital twins, IoT enabled, of course, right? So meaning you're bringing, you're blending the IoT sensor data, you know, SCADA data, tel telemetry, PLC, et cetera, and with the business records, i.e. the maintenance records, the failure records in your EAM, right? In your ECC or in your S4, uh, even uh, non-SAP solutions as well, uh, or, or a mix of these. And uh, uh, the output, is that with these technologies, we can help you to become more data-driven, okay? Becoming more intelligent in, your, in executing your condition monitoring by also, you know, having the signals from these technologies, i.e. anomalies, right, that are detected through machine learning. Um, the failure probabilities estimated using things like, again, machine learning we'll talk about using WIBO statistics analyzing the failure modes, uh, looking at your maintenance records, estimating remaining useful life, root cause analysis, et cetera. Okay, the next slide, please. So, uh, so you, know, what does, you know, what does it mean, right? So um, it really means being, bringing this user experience, all these standard capabilities um, with a solution that are specifically designed for your business users, right? So, uh, so when I first started working on this topic about a year ago, uh, you know, this area was still quite, quite, uh, quite esoteric. And at that point in time, we really designed a, a toolkit for data scientists. But over time, our customers have been really telling us for them to scale, to be able to use this technology uh, at scale and really to get business values from. Um, it really need to be designed for reliability professionals. And we took it too hard, right? So we didn't forget about the data scientists and the advanced analytics people. And of course we enable, you know, people like uh, Shrikant and, uh, you know, uh, uh, partners like uh, Crave uh, Infotech be able to add additional models, and algorithms, et cetera. But at the heart, right, so this solution is designed to bring that compelling user experience, all these capabilities for your business users. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to have IT support all the time. You don't have to have expensive data scientists on staff. You can have your business users to do all these things. And what are these things? Let's, let's go through them in details. Uh, the next slide, please. So, uh, so first of all, right, so, we need to enable the business users to have a 360 degree view 
you know, for those equipment for the, or the fleet of equipment that they manage, right? As a reliability professional, reliability engineer, you know, maintenance planner, or sometimes uh, as a strategist, right? So I need to be able to look at all the, um, you know, all the information, right? So the characteristics, the attributes, uh, the the equipment hierarchy, the install location, installations, uh, all the structures, the the uh, the components, the spare parts, be able to visualize them, and I want to be able to view all the documentations. I want to see all the monitoring, right? So all the alerts, all the signals, you know, doesn't matter from which sources. I want to be able to do root cause analysis. I wanted to be able to see all the maintenance records. I want to see all of these things in one place. Okay, I don't want to go to different systems messing around with log different logins using different tools. I want to see them all in my browser in one place. And this is what we're offering. And, and actually, this is a fundamental capability that's available with all of our IAM intelligent asset management products. Um, you know, this is the common capabilities based on a common master data model. And that's in real time synchronized with what you already have in ECC or S4. Okay. The next slide, please. And as Srikant has mentioned before, right, so, so we also provide advanced analytics as part of this predictive maintenance capability. And a lot of these advanced analytics are running with machine learning in the background. Um, and uh, uh, it's called advanced analytics because uh, unlike doing machine learning uh, models, right? So these are things that uh, they need to be configured once, right? So for example, by Crave Infotech uh, consultants once, and uh, your business users will always be getting the insights, um, you know, through these analytics user interface these analytics insights are, you know, are just surfacing to the, uh, you know, to the users without, you know, people actually doing, you know, modeling or what, or, or whatever, in, uh, you know, it's driven by AI in the background. So things like uh, getting insights around your failure modes uh, by looking at not only what people have catch, capture indicated in their notifications, but also actually analyzing the textual records, the unstructured data. Uh, you know, how often do these failure modes actually occur in the field? How does it compare against peers, right? What are the actual mean times to repair uh, based, on the, based on history? Uh, looking at the failure curves, right? So for example, applying Weibo, Weibo statistics, statistic, statistics and estimating remaining useful life, um, estimating failure probabilities for equipment over, over time. Capturing a digital fingerprint, right? Looking at the IoT sensor data, capturing uh, capturing these fingerprints and be able to analyze them visually. Uh, analyzing the so-called leading indicators, uh, the ability for machine learning to sift through the IoT data and maintenance records and uh, uh, just bring to the to the users what are the most important sensors and what are the most important thresholds. So you can apply these thresholds easily into your condition monitoring uh, you know, program, which is provided by this, uh, by this tool. Uh, this tool actually has advanced rule-based alerting framework. So you can actually um, you know, be monitoring these thresholds, these specific, specific indicators or sensors. And these thresholds could be from these machine learning analytics, or it could be from you know what's provided by your you know by the documentation by the OEMs, and you could be monitoring the uh, specific signals from machine learning, from engineering simulations, and a combination of these things. Okay, so all these are standard capabilities that uh, are available to your business users um, after you know configurations uh, you know pretty much one time by by uh, again, uh, you know, our friends at Crave Infotech. Um, and of course your business users can change them, onboard more equipment, adding more rules, et cetera, et cetera. The next slide, please. But at the heart of uh, our predictive solutions, really machine learning. 
And uh, uh, we've actually been at this game for eight years, uh, actually more than eight, eight years, I think. And the idea here is that um, um, we wanted to enable, again, business users, reliability professionals, reliability engineers to be able to do this themselves. Okay, and uh, of course, from a, in a from a project point of view, it's best to go through the cycle with a expert from Crave Infotech. Uh, but in the long term administration, onboarding new equipment, etc., the goal from our product team is to enable your business users to be able to do this from an ongoing basis. Okay, and uh, what that means is having a GUI. Okay. A, a GUI based on theory part of the application to be able to configure data sets, right? So you can, you know, look at the IoT data sets, maintenance records, bring them together using the GUI, right? Picking what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, right? As, an ex, as a subject matter expert, as a business user, not, you don't have to learn how to code. You don't learn, you don't have to be a statistician or data scientists to do this. It's all GUI driven, okay? You can manage the life cycle of a machine learning model. So as a reliability engineer, for example, I can sit down, create this data set, right? I can schedule, um, I can create a predictive model. I can look at how the model, uh, 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 how accurate or how robust this model by testing it and uh, see the accuracy metrics. I can schedule the ongoing learning or inferencing or training the model based on historical data. For example, I can set a schedule to run this model every month. And it's looking at the rolling three months of IoT data and maintenance records. And I can also schedule how often this model actually applies, meaning I can run it every hour, I can run it every 15 minutes. And actually now looking at or inferencing um, from the incoming data from your equipment, from your PLC, IoT, et cetera, okay? And generating a signal. That signal could be an anomaly, right? So how confident is the machine learning be believe that the equipment is behaving abnormally? Okay, it quantifies that, gives a signal. Or, or it can estimate a specific failure probability there is a 30% chance that this equipment is going to fail in two weeks, okay? And the idea here is that, you know, from, from SAP, we provide out of the box these content, these algorithms, okay? So we have uh, these nine algorithms that are out of the box, six specifically to detect anomalies, three specifically to, to um, estimate um, the failure probability. And two of these, specifically AAD and uh, AFP, uh, these are automated, meaning that they're actually SAP proprietary. They are actually doing optimization on its own. They're picking sub-algorithm on its own. Um, we most of the time just recommend project teams to start with these automated algorithms. Um, you know, use your own data and you can quickly get value out of these models. And of course, um, at the heart, right, so we enable um, um, our partners, uh, even customer ITs, data scientists, to be able to extend and add their own models and own algorithms. So there's a slew of capabilities that are designed for, you know, for experts, for example, at Crave Infotech to bring their own models and algorithms, you know, specifically for your own equipment, if there's a need. Okay, so that is also available. The next slide, please. The other um, innovation that we're bringing to our customers is really bringing simulations, engineering simulations into the same solution so that you can triangulate and you can also play off each other between machine learning and engineering simulations. And the idea here is that um, we, um, we are using IoT enabled technologies that we, we license from ANSYS. Okay, ANSYS being a, uh, a world leader, one of the world leaders in engineering simulations in digital twin. And we're using their, 
their uh, multi-physics engine to be able to determine uh, or, or, or to generate virtual sensors. So the, uh, the idea concept is actually quite simple, right? So here, looking at this you know, small picture here, you have a very simple uh, demonstration equipment where you have a uh, accelerometer on the top, right? So, so uh, physically, you're actually calculating, you're, you're actually sensing, right, the, the acceleration. But with a digital twin, with the multi-physics engine, we can actually put a virtual sensor elsewhere on this equipment and actually derive or calculate the stress and strain anywhere on this equipment using this technology. So these are virtual sensors. So what that means is that you can add virtual sensors to complement your physical sensors. And these virtual sensors can also be used to create alerts, to do condition monitoring, right? Based on thresholds, uh, based on, um, um, on, on conditions that we, we detect. And uh, these alerts, right, so, um, you know, are valuable because, you know, sometimes, uh, or for, for specific equipment asset classes, you simply are, it's just physically impossible or, or too expensive to put these, uh, to put IoT sensors in, right? So you have a, a you know, equipment that's uh, submerged under the water, under the ocean, uh, or you have a drill, for example, that's underground or, you know, multi-stage compressors, you just, you know, don't have a sensor in, in different stages of the, the compressor. Um, so there are lots of examples, but with this technology, you can compute virtual sensors, okay, based on digital twin, uh, based on ANSYS engineering simulation models, it's multi-physics, and uh, we are also now seeing customers combining these techniques together, i.e. bringing virtual sensors with IoT sensors and feed them both to machine learning to detect anomalies, to estimate failure probabilities in a more robust way. So these capabilities are all standard with our solution. The next slide, please. And ultimately, right, so um, SAP is about business processes. It's about surfacing and uh, turning these insights into action, right? So uh, Srikant has mentioned this before, right? So we have as an intelligence network, we enable um, collaboration between the manufacturers and operators, right? So for example, you can get these thresholds, you can get these uh, models, you can get these documentation from your, uh, from your manufacturers. Um, you can bring these insights back to your asset strategists. And ultimately, it's about creating these maintenance recommendations that go back to your EAM, as Srikant has mentioned, based on actual insights, right? Based on sensor information, virtual sensors, machine learning, and having your mobile workforce, your technicians in the field, be able to actually see IoT readings, to see machine learning signals, to get these alerts that's generated from you know, machine learning, virtual sensors, et cetera things like that, right? So these are the standard use cases, and this is what SAP is about, right? So we, we worked out these integration points so that, you know, you don't have to, be, to, to build these out um, on your own. Um, so that's, that's really, you know, how we differentiate ourselves against all these tools that are there. The next slide, please. So um, we're almost at the end. So uh, just a couple of customer examples, right? So, um, um, so there are links that you can actually go to to read out more. But one one of these uh, example is uh, a a customer in Italy and Saldo Energia, and uh, uh, they are actually using um, our IoT technologies, edge computing, and of course predictive SI insights using machine learning, uh, you know, from our algorithms, uh, their own algorithms to help them to digitally transform their manufacturing environment. Applying to the equipment on the shop floor, um, they do power plant engineering and manufacturing. And we have another customer which you actually can read up on, on Forbes. So it's Norwegian Public Road Administration. They're using this digital twin technology that we talked about, virtual sensors on the roads, on the bridges, okay? So they're using digital twin to actually calculate um, 
calculate, uh, determine these, these uh, virtual sensors. And they're using these virtual sensors, compare them with the physical sensors to detect anomalies, to trigger alerts, and to really um, you know, bring the advanced warnings uh, to potential failures to keep the road safe. OK? Um, the next slide, please. And uh, before I end, I just wanted to really talk quickly, talk about, you know, um, you know, so with, with customers, what's our recommendation on weight restore, right? So I think you're really looking at a couple of things, right? So you're looking at data availability, right? So what type of data do you already have? Do you have, do you have collected, right? And also look at equipment complexity. So meaning um, if you already have, um, uh, you know, IoT data, or you've already collected these data, maybe the, the place to start is start doing condition monitoring, start taking advantage of um, the capabilities that uh, these tools have to offer. Um, as you collect more data and as you, you know, start uh, um, being able to blend um, your, your maintenance records, start applying machine learning, right? And AI capabilities start doing some anomaly detection, doing um, some failure mode analysis based on your data. And now you have um, you know, more, uh, more robust, uh, more data-driven practices, and maybe start thinking about doing engineering simulations with those equipment that are highly critical, right? So it takes a little bit more because you will need the digital twin for these highly complex equipment. But with these engineering simulations, you have more capabilities to gain more insights and ultimately being played off from each other, right? So combining machine learning signals and uh, engineering simulations, virtual sensors, um, you know, uh, again, like I said, we have customers already doing this, feeding both signals to machine learning and AI to gain greater insights. Okay, with that, um, uh, thank you again. Wanted to uh, return it to Shikan and to Sunny. Thank you, Simon. I was on mute. Appreciate that. Now that was, I also learned a few things. So there is every day something new to learn. <clears throat> uh, so uh, we are coming to the end. Of course, this is, uh, we'll open up for Q&A, but um, if you have any opportunities, as I mentioned, we do help with the intelligent asset management journey um, evaluation or asset management maturity evaluation. So if you need any help, we'll be happy to, there is no obligation. And you can visit us at the App Center. These are our details. Uh, over to you, Sunny. Do you have any Q&A? Thank you, Shrikant. I'll just, uh, after uh, we have just finished our rep representation, I will just open for Q&A session. And I'll just, uh, everyone putting on uh, unmute so that they can have any questions they can ask directly and make it more interactive. Or you can also put it into Q&A if you have anything. Yeah. I think you just muted them. They were unmuted. I've just asked them okay, to, okay. Yeah, okay. they so can Sunny, unmute them. Uh, um, I think you already uh, covered a couple of areas, but I do want to know if somebody wants to start, um, because you know, predictive is the end goal, right? And everybody strives for it, but a lot of organizations see that, are they ready for it? So what probably, um, I think you tried to cover that into earlier slide with three different offerings. Um, maybe you can uh, share or shed more light around this, how they can approach and what prepare, preparation they probably uh, can do before they um, embark on this journey. Sunny, did you hear me, Sunny? Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, Simon, Simon. The question was for you. <laughs> my bad. So, Simon, um, my question was, uh, is, is that how, what kind of preparation uh, customers should do uh, before they looking start looking at predictive maintenance or predictive journey? Right. I think, um, so, Sunny, if you don't mind going back to my last slide. Yeah, Shrikan, could you please do it for us? Yes, yes. I think um, from our point of view, right, so we have um, 
So, so we have uh, tens of customers that are, uh, that are PAI subscribers today. And uh, uh, the reality is most of our customers are really using the solution first for IoT condition monitoring. Okay, as you, um, you know, embark the journey, like uh, Shrikant said, right? So I'm predictive. The first thing to do is probably just start using, just taking advantage of all the sensor information that you already have. Okay, start creating some rules, mounting the thresholds. And as you, um, you know, gain more confidence, get more success, now maybe start doing some machine learning, right? So I think, um, you know, from our point of view, the customers are starting to get values after, get, after having uh, more than 30 days worth of, uh, of IoT sensor data, right? So I, maybe as you start the project, start collecting the data, um, you, you know, in 30 days, we are more or less being able to, to run machine learning. And the other thing, Trikan, is that you know we absolutely rely on on um, on you, right, on our partners and customers, to make sure the data are clean, right. So yeah, meaning, you're... meaning not not just the sensor information, right. So of course the connectivity, et cetera, of course, uh, but also uh, more importantly, we see a lot of customers are are um, having challenges with their maintenance records, right. Yeah. I.e., yeah. what's in EAM. Um, you know what? What? What are the right? Uh, you know, failure. Uh, you know, failure codes, right? So the the uh, the profile catalog, right? So are people applying the same definition? The equipment hierarchy, equipment ha taxonomy. Um, you know, just there's a lot of human factors, a lot of processes, and uh, um, uh, you know, best practice within EAM itself. I think this is something that you know we absolutely rely on. You know, our partners and start doing doing. Um, you know, more complex things like engineering simulations, building digital twins. Um, did, did, did that help, Shiga? Yes, yes, definitely. I, I, one point you mentioned very important is, means there are so many tools available in the intelligent asset management like uh, ASPM, but that works very effectively because that traditionally uh, customers were doing RCM and FEMA FMEA outside SAP, and they were using different tools, but there was no good way to bring the feedback back into SAP and do those activities. It was very hard, and they were never fully successful. But with this uh, IAM now, we can bring those feedbacks into SAP, and SAP is investing a lot, right? So if uh, any, to make this successful, of course, you need a good data, clean data, decent quality of data, but at the same time, you need somebody who can do this analysis for you who can come and look at the RCM and give you those recommendations which can be implemented. And that's where definitely um, we can help. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think Shrikan Martin is having some questions. He just raised his hand as well. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. I, I suppose I have two questions, right? The first one is um, SAP PM. Okay. So we do not have S4 HANA installed we have the sap model before that so i'm wondering does this still communicate with the the basic sap pm model and my second question then is i'm ring i'm i'm tuned in from ireland okay i just want to understand craven for tech where are you actually based have you representation at this side of the world yes okay so uh, let me ask answer your first question the the good news is the iam is standalone. It is on the cloud platform, SAP cloud platform, and it's designed to work with ECC, S4, and even with non-SAP systems too. So, but it works very well with ECC and S4 both. Uh, so that should answer your first question. The second is we do have presence in UK, uh, in the Europe region. So if you need help, uh, we can. Uh, we have local team in Europe. Uh, but our headquartered in U US and we have presence in Europe, in UK and in India, of course, uh, is our offshore uh, and development center, which helps us to keep our cost optimum. Uh, and we do have some presence in Africa, Nigeria and Ken uh, Kenya. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you joining the webinar. Hope you this was helpful. Uh, if you have any 
questions, we'll be happy to answer. You can reach out to me or uh, Simon and uh, hope this helps you to move forward or uh, get to the next level from your reactive to predictive journey. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.